Hi guys, this is what you must know before adding an eGPU. There's a plethora of videos out there on the internet. Many discuss many things, but most do not discuss the pitfalls and the shortcomings of taking option B or C. In general, installing an eGPU is a generic process, but there are many forks on the road that require distinguishing, which I will elaborate upon. Again, um, many people have different reasons as to why they have a desktop, but in my case, I wanted uh, a laptop that was very capable and very competent as far as graphics came because uh, not only did I want something that was uh, portable, but I also wanted something that doubled from my workstation. Um, so obviously, many workstations are not desktops. Uh, they tend to be laptops, and uh, if you want a workstation to be you know, graphics competent, you have to go down this road. Here's a text version of all subsequent slides in case you aren't interested in pictures and just in case you want to understand what the generic process I spoke about looked like. Uh, feel free to pause this video and go through the process flow. For many eGPU installations, it'll look mostly like this and the end results and the middle results and the processes are more or less the same. So the main thing you need to absolutely know before you begin this journey to build the eGPU is, what is the eGPU input slot in your motherboard doing right now? Is it occupied? If it is, do you have another option? What you need to search for is a PCI Mini Express slot or an NVMe M.2 slot. In case you do have an occupied slot, if you replace whatever is using it with your eGPU cable, what will you lose? So make and model of my laptop, uh, Asus G531. Uh, the processor is the uh, i7, uh, ninth generation from Intel. Uh, I have a dedicated GPU from NVIDIA, so that is small and soldered onto the motherboard. The OS is a Windows 10, and uh, the eGPU is an NVIDIA MSI 1650, which is on the laptop, as you can clearly see. So in my case, I went about testing it with my eGPU of choice, which is the NVIDIA 1650 GTX Super. It may be prudent to use something cheap and functional for the heck of it at this stage. You may want something cheap and returnable and functional because there's no point of using something expensive, something really heavy and serious if it's going to encounter errors. So you can see how short-sighted that would be if you were to spend all this money on something that wouldn't even work. So um, generally, many people show you videos with uh, them uh, hooking up a, a PCI Mini Express slot, which is occupied with a Wi-Fi, but that's not the case with um, uh, all laptops. In my case, um, I didn't have that. I only had the NVMe M.2. And um, if you peel the black cover where the concentric circles are, you will see that. That's the SSD slot. Um, my SSD slot was taking up my M.2 NVMe slot, um, which was only the only place where I could connect my eGPU. And because I had lost my OS drive and um, that's where my C drive sat on that SSD, I had to move all my data and my OS to the HDD, which my laptop did not come with, which meant uh, manipulating it and doing some uh, partition shifts so as I said, because I had to install the OS on the HDD, which was bought to replace the SDD be being taken out, there was a lot of physical tinkering involved. I bought an HDD and it didn't come with the connector to the motherboard. And it wasn't really helpful that getting in the blue input tip of the HDD connector was another pain point. Uh, it's, it's pretty small, so it's tiny and tricky. And obviously because um, I have an NVMe M.2. I had to find a corresponding eGPU dock. For many, it generally tends to be the PCI uh, Mini Express, but in my case, it was the NVMe uh, ADT um, link, which you can find on Amazon. It's very difficult to find physically in stores, but this depends on what your inputting slot is onto your motherboard. In my case, it was NVMe, and this corresponded to it. In the event that uh, you do have an NVMe slot, you have to be careful about whether your NVMe slot is compatible with the eGPU docs NVMe cable. There are various types of SSDs and some M2 cords vary, so make sure you have the same thing. The most generic one is the key M format, which is the middle picture here. 
uh, in green and you have to make sure whatever you have on your motherboard the NVMe matches what you have on the cable so yeah I opened up my laptop and as you can see um, that main green thing with the red line pointed to it that's my NVMe SSD um, I, I removed that and then I connected uh, my eGPU dock um, to the right into that particular slot now the issue with that is um, if you if you're going to replace your SSD and NVMe, sorry, that's the same thing. But if you're going to do that, it's 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 going to be much longer for you to boot up a computer if your OS is on a hard drive. Uh, in my case, uh, that's what I did. I put the entire C and OS on C drive in um, the HDD. Uh, you're going to feel that it's a bit more choppy. But um, in my case, that was the only way. Okay, so getting this far in itself is an achievement. And I say this because it assumes you've got the graphics card in the graphics card dock. You've got the graphics card to laptop cable, which is a PCI Express Mini or M.2 to your laptop's input slot. And lastly, you've got the graphics card dock and the graphics card hooked up to your power supply. So this assumes everything is physically ready to go. Now, um, in the previous slide, I said, assuming you got it this far, uh, this particular slide will justify why I said that. So if you were to go to your device manager and look up your display adapters, you will see, um, assuming that uh, the graphics card that you installed appears, and this is assuming you even installed the relevant driver for that, that if you see a warning flag next to the graphics card you installed, you have a bit of worrying to do. So many people will install their graphics card and um, they will think that just because it appeared, they could see it in their de uh, device manager or in their hardware components that it's ready to go. But in reality, what you want to check for is whether there's a, uh, a cautionary flag on uh, next to your graphics card and under display adapters in the device manager console. Now, if you did get the error 43, um, you could do endless Googling about it. Some people will say you have to download this script, that script, you have to run this, that, or you have to keep reinstalling the driver to no avail. Um, many people decide to restart the PC, reinstall the driver uh, using the DDU program, or uh, in general, a combination of all three of these things that I've mentioned here. Uh, so this is the uh, decision-making tree. Um, I kind of sequentially put in order of all the things that you may encounter. Um, main junctions here are, uh, do you have a PCI Mini Express port or an NVMe M.2? You have to identify um, how you're hooking up your eGPU to your motherboard, and then uh, installing the drivers, so on and so forth. And then again, the most critical part is after installation of the eGPU's graphics driver. Does the laptop recognize it or not? If it doesn't, you have to disable incumbent drivers and do a fresh install of your desired graphics cards driver. And even then, you have to see if under device manager, there is a cautionary flag next to the recognized graphics driver, assuming it was recognized. As you can see, it all comes down to do you see an error 43 code or not? This is really open-ended from here on. Um, there's a long list of things you can do, like uh, talking to people on public forums or being a Google maniac. Um, these are all last minute heroics. It can be a very lost cause very easily because there is no proper support system. Uh, the easiest thing to do at this point is uh, return your graphics card and all components, get your money back and pat yourself